Greetings, Tom Merle here. Welcome to the celebration. I know you could be anywhere. So the fact that you are here today sharing your greatest gifts, your time and energy, it means the world to me. I hope you know that in this moment and every single moment there is, that you are valued, you are loved, and you are appreciated just as you are. My friends, I hope you are doing well, having a wonderful New Year's. I appreciate you. So glad that you are spending your time with me here today. We got some things on the list to cover. First and foremost, we're going to talk about this. One of the most important qualities to have is self-awareness. And I'm not the first one to tell you that. So this isn't anything new, I'm sure, that you're hearing. But the further along I go, the more I realize self-awareness is such a superpower. It is what is either going to be your biggest strength or deficit. If you are having trouble in your relationships, in your friendships, in your business, it can be traced back to self-awareness. Now, I specifically want to bring up self-awareness and realizing the way that you look at the world differently and the way that influences the way you do things. If you can really unlock that, that is when, from a business standpoint, uh, as a team member, any of that kind of stuff, that's when you really take things to the next level. So let me give you an example. My friend and I, shout out to Adam, are huge music fans. By the way, if you are a music nerd, hit me up. Send me a little text. Okay. We got to talk because I'm always trying to trade playlists with folks and see what great music's out there. And I think I have really fantastic taste in music. So anywho, we were basically sharing our uh, 2022 most listened to songs playlist together. So what started is we went to share the Spotify 2022 most listened to playlist. First of all, let me give you some context in case you don't know what this is. So Spotify, I'm sure you know this, is one of the most popular music streaming apps. We got Tidal, we got Spotify, we got Apple Music. I have used all three. Um... Side note, we should do a whole case study. I don't know if you know this. Lovey Ajayi is the one who uh, told me about this. I'm pretty sure it's Lovey. Maybe it was. I'm pretty sure it was Lovey. Maybe it wasn't. Either way, shout out to Lovey. Uh, did you know Jack Dorsey of Twitter bought a significant stake in Jay-Z's title so basically has bought Jay-Z out more or less. Now, these aren't exact details but interesting interesting little tidbit there we're gonna have to do a little research into that do a podcast episode just on that um i use all three because i'm obsessed with music and they all give different playlists spotify by far their genius their unique selling point out of all of them are their playlists it is the thing that i don't think any of the other ones can even come close to how amazing they are. I think that Apple Music, the sound quality is what makes that best. Spatial quality is super amazing. So basically what uh, Spotify does at the end of each year is they are able to, (laughs) because they have all the data on us, say, these are your top five artists. These are your top five songs. This is how you listen to music. This is how many genres you listen to. I was really proud. I listened to like 75 or 80 different genres or something like that. I didn't even know there was that many genres. Let let me, let me pause. Okay. I got my stats for all of you that are interested. I explored 35 different genres of music. And the number that I was thinking of that was in the seventies is how many different artists I've listened to. Uh, It was not in the seventies. And I listened to 728 different artists this year. Uh, So it gave me the adventure. I'm an adventurer listener. Always trying to find the deep cuts. Uh, My number one artist, Laura Mvula. And that puts me in her top 
0.5% of listeners. Woo! Laura, if you're listening, I'm literally statistically your biggest fan. So we should jam. Uh, Sugar Ross was my second most listened to artist that tracks. Uh, my top songs are, are songs I listen to while I'm working. So James Sizemore's music. I love listening to James Sizemore while I'm working. Um, okay. So anyways, I was super excited because last week they gave me, they reminded me for Thanksgiving. Hey, do you want to listen to your 2021 most listened to song playlist? Because the 2022 is about to come out. So I was like, yes. So started to listen to that. It was so amazing as this walk down memory lane. Because it was back before my daughter discovered Coco Melon. And she was still down to listen to uh, daddy's music. And so it had all these songs that Gemma used to listen to and like listening to. Um, so then anyways, the 2022 came out. And it's been awesome. I've been going through it. I've been being disciplined and not looking ahead. So each song that comes up, I'm like, oh, yeah, I did love this song this year. So I was asking my friend Adam, share it with me. So God is having this whole conversation on Spotify. Okay. Now I want to pause here. What a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant use of data. Are you kidding me? Most companies out there are using your data to sell it to people like me where I want to use that data to advertise to you. And of course, that's what I do for my clients too. That's what most people are doing with their data. Another way they're doing it is really, if you want to keep people on your platform, one of the most important ways you can do that is through your the customized experience that you give them. Every single one of us, when you log on to Amazon, Netflix, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Whatever it is, we're all having completely different experiences, okay? This is the power of the the algorithm, that it will change your world. This is one of the things that we have found out in terms of hate speech and radicalization, is that you'll have people go on YouTube, and for some reason, somebody will be watching a video that's like, I don't know, I want to learn how to bake, and they'll be like, that's cool, but what about this Joe Rogan? And you're like, okay, I'll watch this Joe Rogan. They'll be like, well, if you like this Joe Rogan, maybe you'll like, he's not on there anymore, but maybe you'll like Alex Jones. And if you like Alex, next thing you know, your cousin's into QAnon and believes things that are 100% BS. Okay, that's how it happens, right? Because it's just like, how about this? How about that? And it's also what happens on Facebook, where Facebook goes, oh, you know what keeps people on our app? whatever their favorite flavor of emotion is and what is most people's favorite flavor of emotion rage and fear baby rage and fear so anytime facebook realizes you're about to get off their app and they can tell by your scrolling habits anytime you start to scroll and it seems like you're going to get off they serve you up your favorite flavor of rage my friend So what happens to a lot of us is we just see lots of posts that are curated specifically to piss us off because when we get pissed off, we engage on the app. Okay. So, and it's, it's great because then they just put you on a platter and are like, Hey, you can now sell to this person. And it's like, all right, I'm in. So that's the, there's some of the, the ethical conversations that are needed to be had for all of us who are trying to make money in social media. But with Spotify specifically, Spotify is able to basically be like, look, you probably forgot, but we, every single song you listen to, we keep track of every single song you listen to for how long, when you stop, when you start all of this stuff, we're totally keeping track of it. And we're using all of that data to then sell it to advertisers. Yes, but we're using it to try to keep you on the platform because if you stay on the platform, we can sell you for more money. Okay. That's the whole exchange. Spotify does this brilliant thing where they're like, Hey, check it out. This is what your user behavior looks like. And to me, it's so fascinating because it's really on the same thread of people say, um, Hey, Facebook's listening to me on my phone because I'll say something like, I'm really interested in buying sweaters. Then the next day I'll see a, uh an advertisement for a sweater they're listening on our phones and to me 
the what brings it up for me is we just once again aren't self-aware enough to realize that we really explore our subconscious on the internet. When you're going through Instagram and you're just kind of zoned out and scrolling, you're almost in this like hypnotic, relaxed state where it really feels like no one's looking. And so you can kind of explore anything you want. And uh, the thing about it is the algorithm starts to get to know you better than you know yourself. And so for us, it feels like, hey, I just said I want this thing and now it's trying to advertise it to me. But the thing is, is you had been exploring your likes and dislikes long before you said it out loud. So by the time you say, I want this thing out loud, you've been exploring that subconsciously, I don't know, days, weeks, months, years, and the algorithm knows it because we're exposing our subconscious to this algorithm. And it can then feed us back oh, this is what you like. You don't think you like this, but the part of you that shows up on our platform, this is what you like. So it's fascinating. Spotify is very much a reminder of that, that our user behavior that we think is very private is not private at all. And um, sometimes companies do really fun things with it, like this Spotify end of the, the year. And sometimes they use it ethically and oftentimes they don't. So it's just always something to keep in mind. Now, obviously I'm in the crowd where I make my living off of social media, off of technology, but it's helpful to be aware of these things, both as users and as business owners, but most importantly to me as, as citizens, as parents, as people who are trying to look at Where's our culture going to be seven generations from now? So back to this Spotify. We're going to get there, y'all. We're going to get there. You got to go on these little rivers and streams and lakes with me to get to the big ocean I'm trying to take you to. It's all context. So we started talking and Spotify, basically you can share playlists with friends. If I'm listening to a playlist, I can go here, listen to this. But the 2022 playlist, you can't actually share. We both try to share it with each other. And when we opened it, it brought up my playlist. So I thought, okay, let's pause and debrief that as a team. So Spotify thought to themselves, we don't want people sharing their own 2022 playlist. We want them to listen to their own. We want you to engage with the one we have made from you. So it's interesting. It's a conscious choice. So why do you think they chose that? What do you what for them was going on when they were debating this. So anyways, we figured out a workaround, just add it to a new playlist, share that playlist with me. So then we started to talk about, well, what playlist do you listen to? And I said, well, I always listen to my top five playlist. And then he said, well, I always listen to my liked songs playlist. And he said, wait a sec, what are these top five things? And I told him, oh, Spotify will recommend you five different, sometimes six different genres of music you listen to. And they have a playlist for each one of those genres. It's amazing. It's like, I didn't know this. So I said, find it. Once you find it, like each one of them because they're not going to show it to you again. So you just got to like it and then boom, it's in your library. So he did it. Boom, blew his mind. So then I was sitting there thinking, okay, I didn't realize this. How I use Spotify is a skill. Like I realized because I use it so much because I'm always nerding out. I mean, for example, on a Saturday, I'll put my daughter to bed and I'll clean up the house, get something to eat. And from like nine till two in the morning, I'm just sitting in my room listening to music. Okay, <laughs> Like I am a nerd. So, you know, you figure actually, I actually think to Spotify, I can tell you, give me a sec. Okay. I listened to 21,000 and one minutes worth of Spotify. So that's 73% of other listeners. Now, keep in mind, I also have Apple Music and I only listen to Apple Music on Saturdays because they're spatial audio. So that's another probably five, six hours a week of music that Spotify doesn't have track of. So I'm listening to a ton of music. And because I put so much time into it and because of all the other skills I have in my life, I have found 
basically I've created SOPs for how one should listen to Spotify. And my aha was like, okay, you do this in everything you do, Tom, that you go in and you're like, okay, if I'm going to use this, I want to know as much about it as I can. And I want to organize it into systems. And I have a specific goal in mind. And then I, I'm just, I'm going to get everything I can out of this thing that is bringing so much value to me. So that was my self-awareness moment. It's like, okay, you literally could, if you wanted to start teaching people how to use Spotify and for your average Spotify listener, you would dramatically in- increase their their listening experience. You'd make it better. Now, here's the thing. When I first thought that, I was like, mm, that sounds a little cocky, you know? And that's the thing about self-awareness is it touches upon all of these other emotions, right? Okay, well, why do you feel that that's cocky, Tom? It's this is this is real. You seem to know more about how to uh, access Spotify or Apple Music more than your average listener. According to Spotify, you listen to music seventy three percent more than your average listener. So, why does that make you uncomfortable? Ooh, I don't know. That's a tough question, there, Tom. So this is kind of the road you have to go down. If you want to have self-awareness, you need to really understand that you are worthy of love without requisite, as Brene Brown says. That your skills, like when you realize, oh, I'm really good at this thing. The moment you realize you're really good at that thing, you are no more worthy than before you realized it. And if you never share your gifts ever with anyone, you just hang out with yourself and you color in a room, you're still worthy. You are in front of 10 million people sharing your message and it's changing their lives. You're the same level of worthiness. Your worthiness level doesn't increase in like line with like your accolades and your accomplishments and your championships, nor does it decrease with your failures and the horrible things that you've done or any of that. Like your worthiness is always the same. And you want to know how much your worthiness is? infinite. You are infinitely worthy, infinitely, which means never anything less than that is always unlimited beyond comprehension. Your worthiness is beyond comprehension. And that's where a lot of us run into trouble is we try to use our intellect and our analytical mind and our problem solving mind and the mind that loves to organize I'm very much describing myself here. We try to understand our worthiness, but you but you can't do it that way. You can intellectually understand what I'm saying. Like, I get it. I've read that Brene Brown book. I get it. But what we really have to do is practice the feeling of worthiness. Worthiness ultimately is a feeling. And as Joe Dispensa, if you're not checking out Joe Dispensa, check him out. Joe Dispensa always talks about how thoughts are the language of the mind, feelings are the language of the body. So we get it, right? Not, you know, we can more or less, I think a lot of people I know, we we can discipline ourselves into thinking worthy thoughts, you know, like writing down I am affirmations or meditating and clearing your mind or um, having other people share affirmations with you. But what's tough, especially if you've been through trauma, is that we can, in our bodies, create a habit of feeling unworthy. And so we can be thinking positive thoughts. And so now we're covering the mind part. But if the body is addicted to feeling unworthy, if we are pushing the chemical reaction within our body, then the body's constantly going to be influencing the mind to think negative, right? The body's like, hey, I'm used to home for me is how unworthiness feels. That is my safe place, which is a contradiction. Why would our body make its safe place a negative emotion? Because oftentimes the familiar, what is predictable, even if it's horrible, is more of a priority than 
unpredictability than uncertainty. Even if by stepping into uncertainty and unpredictability, you're you're giving yourself a shot at actually being happy. If you've been through trauma, then our priority is is safety, is security. It's why a lot of us, myself included, especially when you're young, when you start to create a chosen family, it's like, look, the number one thing I need from you is stability that you have my back. I will look the other way if you do all kinds of crooked shit, as long as we have this code that we're going to have each other's back no matter what. So it's like, now I have this certainty, even though... I'm going to now get involved with a bunch of dysfunctional stuff that's probably going to lead to my detriment, but I can still rely upon that it'll be predictable. So our bodies create these muscle memory habits. So with worthiness, my big aha for me, you don't have to, honestly, you don't have to believe anything I'm saying or try any of this, but this has been my big aha of all these things that I hear from all these different places is that you just really got to sit down and just say to yourself, well, well, then what does worthiness feel like? And it, for you, if you're anything like me, it's like, well, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, well, uh, why don't we go ahead then and just get ourselves curious here? What does worthiness feel like? Well, I can start with like, what it doesn't feel like. doesn't feel like guilt. All right. What does it feel like to not be carrying around this huge weight of guilt and shame i don't know well keep getting curious practice why don't we start with anywhere in your body you're holding obvious tension yeah my throat my feet my stomach my chest my hands my tongue my jaw okay why don't you just start there just try relaxing all those places because i bet worthiness doesn't feel clenched Okay, wow, that's really hard. It's really hard to relax. Okay, why don't you try? Uh-oh, I'm about to call people out. Why don't you try not rushing everywhere? Why you got to listen to everything on 2x speed? Oh, that one got me. <laughs> what do you mean? I got to listen to it on 2x speed. I got to get through this. Why you got to get through this? What's the hurry? Well, I got to listen to this because I'm so curious about uh about something else. I got like 10 podcasts I want to listen to. Why you got to listen to 10? What you need in life is here right now. You don't got to go anywhere else for what you need. Everything you need is in this moment. Why you got to, why you trying to rush? I don't know. We'll get curious because I bet worthiness doesn't feel like rushing. I bet worthiness feels like that those kind of days is for me where you're on vacation, open road, you got nowhere to be, you got tons of time no rush anything that comes up isn't a problem it's a new adventure that's just like abundant relaxed no problems i bet it feels like that and you don't listen to 2x speed on on that all right and just okay what does it actually feel like in my body not so much what am i thinking because i can fake thoughts what does it actually feel like in my body that's been my really big journey is just asking myself, what does that feel like? Hey, I want to have a really successful launch next week. Okay, what will a successful launch feel like? Not will it look not what will it look like? I don't care about the details. I don't care about how much money you're gonna make. How will it feel? Will it feel really stressed and anxious? And oh my God, is this thing gonna go wrong? Because that's usually how you feel on launches and you've made a lot of money and you didn't feel as excited as you thought you did. You felt very stressed. So <laughs> what in your mind would an actual launch feel like where it feels amazing? What does that feel like? Okay. Practice that all day. You should feel like that. And then I don't have to wait for the future to come. Then it doesn't matter if I have a successful launch or not because, well, damn, I already feel successful. And why do I feel successful? Because I've connected to my worthiness and your worthiness is infinite, infinite, infinite. And infinite means there is no beginning. There is no end. It just always is forever. Whoo.
chew on that, my friends. Chew on that. You want to have self-awareness? You got to chew on unanswerable questions. Ask yourself questions that your mind literally cannot fathom. What is infinity? That's like the go-to. What is infinity? You'll never, ever, ever, ever be able to understand infinity with your intellect. Ever. You want to give it a shot? Watch this show on Netflix. It's called Infinity. It's probably got a different title, but it's the words infinity in it. And you have these mathematicians, one of my favorite documentaries of the year. You have these mathematicians who study infinity. It is literally their job. They are paid the big bucks to mathematically study infinity. And uh, I won't give it away, but there's this one scene where they describe some really profound things about infinity. They will blow your mind if you watch it. Spiritually, everything. It'll blow your mind. So anyways, they said to the person, he explained it. And then they said, the, the documentary person said, do you understand that? And and the person answered and he said, I totally understand it mathematically, but when I apply it to life, which is math, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. So in other words, like I get it on paper, but I don't get it inside my body. Okay. So there are questions that you cannot answer. And if you have an answer to them, that is fear. That is fear. That is you needing certainty more than you actually wanting the experience. Any question that has to do with infinity, what's out there, God, things like this, these are unanswerable questions. And I say that as somebody who's Muslim, who thinks maybe they have kind of an answer. But ultimately, there is no way you'll ever understand these huge concepts in your mind. You have to just feel them in your body. That's where it is. So that is my invitation to you is I want you to just start to pay attention to things that you spend a lot of time on that are outside of your work. Okay. Nothing to do with your business. Oftentimes if we have a business, we get, there's so much emotions just entangled that we're really not able to have a bird's eye view of what we're doing well we're usually just there's too much emotions wrapped up in it so start looking around at things that have nothing to do with your job that you spend a lot of time on like i sat down and thought and it was staring at me in the face when spotify was saying hey you listen to us a lot more than a lot of other people still didn't get it it was when i started to talk to my friend and was like well you should do this and i realized oh I have advice to give on this subject. That's interesting. And if I have advice to give on this subject, it means I spent uh, time on it. Even if it was time I didn't want to spend, I spent time on it. Okay, well, let me just start to pay attention to the way I organize my time when I'm engaging with this particular thing. And it could be a thing that gives you enjoyment. It could be a thing that doesn't give you an enjoyment. But what you want to start looking for is what is my behavior when I do that? Just start paying attention and the ahas will come to you of what is special about you when you're using this thing. What are the ways that you're doing it different? And that starts to become that little treasure trail that's going to lead you back to the area of your life where it's most important that you know self-awareness, like something that'll make you money, your business, you know, something like that. You got you to gotta sometimes go outside of your business and follow the breadcrumbs back. Okay? So there's that piece of advice. When you start to realize what are your gifts, it's really going to be in proportion to how much your awareness of your worthiness is going to allow it to shine. Because once again, if there is certainty and just feeling unworthy, there is a certainty in that, that it's like, well, no matter what happens, I know I'm going to feel like shit, or I know it's all going to fall apart, or I know it's all going to come back to me, or I know I'm going to have to do it myself, or I know something's going to go wrong, or I know there'll be fires I'm going to have to put out, or if I am successful, it won't last very long, or do you hear any, I certainly hear many of my thoughts in what I just said. Okay. So it's like, that's a certainty. It's like, well, whatever happens, I know things are going to go wrong. 
So it's not like a positive thought, but it does give me that emotional need of certainty. Okay. The body is addicted to that. So then if I'm like, well, what does worthiness feel like? Now that's an unknown. So I have to find the courage. Like that was my big aha from this past year is how much courage it takes to really be present. It takes so much courage. I think it takes more courage than anything else in life is to just actually feel and to be aware of what you're feeling in the moment. Whew, it's a tough one. The more you dive down that rabbit hole, the more you're going to connect with your infinite worthiness. The more you connect with your infinite worthiness, you're going to release so much low-level stress that is just occupying your day 24-7. And you're going to free up that energy and be able to just notice things more like, wow, I'm really good at this. And then you'll have that self-love to own it rather than to try to hide it. So go down the journey, my friends. It is worth it. You are worth it. You're amazing. I appreciate you. I'd love to hear what you thought of this episode. I'm just in a room here talking to myself. No one's in here with me. So, you know, and then I hit stop and then I send it to Chi Chi and Chi Chi edits this, although there's really nothing to edit on this one. So she'll add an intro and an outro. Boom. She'll send it to Molly. Molly will get the email. Boom. It gets to you. That's like theoretically what it happens, but I don't know how you ended up listening to this. I don't even, I didn't even know if anyone's going to listen to the end, but look at you. You listen to this whole entire podcast. I want to know your name. So send me an email, tom at tomrell.com or uh, my IG is uh, at Tom Earl Artist. I'm trying to remember what my phone number is here. I think I'm going to have to hit pause. Hang on. The number I have that you can text me at is 310-494-2995. Just say, hey, this is name. Was we'll listen to the podcast. You can share your thoughts with me. My friends, I appreciate you so much. What I am working on right now is that I have realized in 2022 that one of my superpowers is storytelling and helping people to boldly tell their story. Now, I have been teaching people for many years now how to scale their story, how to use ads to get your message in front of people. I really feel like if you have a story to tell that you should be using ads to get it out there, even if all you have is a couple dollars a day. The organic algorithm is such a knife fight to get your message in front of people. But there's strategies that we're teaching in our community that um, if you just want to get the exposure, only takes a few dollars. Obviously, if you want to get leads and sales calls, that's a different strategy. That's a little more expensive. But my passion for this next year is now that I have our course, everything's done. And if you want to learn how to run ads, if you want to learn how to scale, whether that's spending $5 a day or spending $50,000 a day. All of that is in our community. You can go through that at your own pace. Do your thing. That is all there for you. What I'm moving to in this next year right now is I want to really teach people how to tell their story. And not in a way where you use my script or my template or you know something constrained like that. I want you to learn how to, from the chaos and vulnerability and beauty of a free ride, of an improv, of sitting down in a chair and feeling inside yourself the message that needs to come out and ugh, getting it out there. And then once you've word vomited it, how to really hone it into a story. I want to give you the keys to unlock the answers within you. I don't have any answers for you. There's nothing I can teach you. You already know it. I just want to take you through an experience that puts you in touch with it yourself. Okay. That is what we're working on in our immersion program. I would love for you to be a part of it. It's where we really do our deep dive stuff. It's where we get to meet once a month. It's where we get to talk once a week. It's where you really get to get it inside my brain. Be an honor if you joined us. You can find out more in the show links below or it's tomearl.me slash DCM as in the direct connect method. DCM. We do have scholarships available for anyone who needs one. If you are low on cash, but rich in ambition, we're for you. We got you. We want you to be a part of our community. So 
you've ever wanted to work with me and timing wasn't right or cash was was low now's the time let's do this you're going to find all that information below i appreciate you so much thank you so much and i will see you next week as always wishing you peace and blessings thank you oh oh one, one more thing i'd love to continue the conversation feel free to join me at tomroll.com slash join subscribe below or let's connect on social media tom earl artist thanks again for watching Thank <laughs> you.